There it is. This is exciting. Let's go ahead and open her up. Reflex Racing. This is the RX-28. Tons of awesome stickers. We love it. We love stickers. And a bag full of parts. So we'll have to get into this, but here we are. Parts and stuffs and things. USCX24 guys have no idea what it means to have a ton of small parts. The Mini Z guys know. Mini Z on road drift. They both have tons of parts. Some springs. Looks like we got ourselves some tool. Not sure what this is. What is this for? It's like a height gauge. Not all the hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and put this guy together. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a task. We will, um, I'm not gonna record the whole thing, I don't think, because it's gonna take us a while. And it's our first time putting something like this together. So what we'll do is we will stop and show you any points of difficulty or of interest or of note. And uh, we'll just kind of give you a progression across as we get parts done and we get uh, different sections done then we will go ahead and kind of stop and show you, but I'm not going to show every part of the build because it is tedious and I will probably get frustrated a few times and uh, you don't need to see that. Maybe I'll show you a little bit of the frustration, but it should be fun. I, I, I'm super excited for this. So, all right, guys, here we go. So this is everything that comes in the kit. We've got our brass chassis, some carbon parts, some downward parts, some aluminum parts. This is the uh, rear diff and axles bearings, uh, some more Delrin and other random parts. These are the uh, A-arms and whatnot, springs, more springs, O-rings, some of our ball pivots, Looks like some tools. I think that's maybe a height gauge. Um, yeah, and stickers and some of this stuff up here. <laughs> anyway, all of our screws. Uh, there's only really four main screw sizes. There's uh, two flats and two button heads. There's the M2 threes and M2 fours, and then the button head six, which is an M2, and the M2 um, button head four. So having all of the screws be pretty much just the four different screws is pretty nice. You don't have a bunch of different screws to deal with. And then the tools you're gonna need is a 1.3, a 1.5, a 0.9 millimeter, and a number zero Phillips, so a smaller Phillips, and then a 4.5 nut driver obviously for your uh, wheel nuts there are some smaller screws in here and some grub screws uh, and those are what are gonna, what's going to use the uh, 0 0.09 or 0 0.9 don't forget your loctite you want to make sure you've got loctite all right the first uh first thing is going to be uh the rear pod so we're going to end up building the rear section and uh yeah Let's get started. So on the rear pod, your first four screws are just gonna be uh, some M23s here and fours here. This is the rear of the pod. And you're gonna put uh, the smaller ones here, larger ones are. And then you're gonna use four of the longer button heads in the rear here to attach the uh, axle carrier. The open side goes down. Okay. And this is gonna allow you to adjust your axle up and down as well. So you don't wanna over tighten anything obviously, but this is something you're going to be adjusting. Again, you can slide up and down. So then we're going to go ahead and install the ball stud in the center here. Don't forget to lock tight. And it uses the 1.5 millimeter. All the ball studs are the 1.5s and all of the uh, countersunk screws and button head screws are the 1.3. Uh, then we're going to use some countersunks, these guys the three millimeters for the pivot balls. And then we're gonna use some of the larger countersunks, so the four millimeters to 
attach the pivot. Now this is Delrin. Uh, do not use Loctite on this. We're using blue Loctite on everything. Um, Non-plastic safe Loctite, like regular blue Loctite and red Loctite will disintegrate plastics. I don't know how it interacts with Delrin, but I would not risk putting uh, Loctite unless it's plastic safe Loctite into the plastic parts. So just be aware. And I don't think this has a front or back, this uh, pivot mount, so you can mount it either way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's symmetrical, so. So then we just have two more pivot balls using the short countersunk screws and then the carbon fiber body clip onto this pivot mount. Uh, it uses the longer countersunk screws. And again, don't Loctite these if it's going into plastic. If you find that these screws are too short for any reason, they should be totally fine, but it's mentioned that if you're finding that they're too short, use the uh, longer, there's two remaining long button head screws. Eh, well, you can see them right here. And you can use those if uh, you feel like these are not long enough, but these seem just fine. And again, don't over tighten because you're going into plastic here. All right. Next, we're going to just go ahead and pop our links in. The links are symmetrical front to back, so you should be fine to put them in either way. However, there's a flat side and a molded side. Make sure you want to put the flat side down. And they're going to be pretty tough to push on. You have to use some force. Okay. They definitely take a lot of force. Of note, we have these tiny screws. These are the ones that are using the Phillips head. These little guys are used in these links. So you use those screws here in these links and you can tighten up the links if you want to tighten them. Uh, they're, they're pretty tight to get on there, but if there's a reason you want to kind of put a little bit more resistance in there, you can. And then obviously over time, as the kit wears in, you will want to add them to keep it tight and it allows you to uh, keep this wearable part uh, in use for a lot longer. You know, eventually you may need to replace it completely if you're completely tightened down, but that's going to be a very long time. So uh, this is a very cool feature of this kit. It allows you to tighten that down. Next, we're going to go ahead and you basically just put your ball into the pivot and put your links on. And we're going to go ahead and put our shock mount on. This uses the long screws. And it is aluminum, so you can use Loctite. And then we're going to go ahead and use our battery brackets and band holders. And these are the same. And they use the four uh, long, uh, shorter length button heads, the four M24 button heads. And we're going to Loctite those as well. We're going to Loctite everything. And then our rubber band holders are just the uh, M24 button head screws as well. So all of these six are just the button heads, the short ones. So that's pretty much the end of that portion of the build. The next part is going to be the rear suspension. Uh, so let's move on to that. So you're going to go ahead and install two of the M2 by six set screws or grub screws. There's the, these are the longer ones. There are some shorter ones that come in the kits. Um, go ahead and put those all the way through and then go ahead and set up a two pivot balls with the four millimeter um, button heads. Make sure you Loctite those. And then we're gonna go ahead and put these little guys on. Now these are aluminum and you should use um, Loctite. There's also O-rings that are gonna go on here. So you're gonna put two O-rings, well, an O-ring on each one. And then we're gonna Loctite it onto here.
make sure you got just a little bit of Loctite on there. And again, these are your spring perches. It's where your springs perch. And they go with the O-ring side out. And you just want to uh, screw them all the way down. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the springs onto the perches. Now, I'm not sure which springs we're supposed to be putting on the perches, to be honest. Hmm. So there's two separate bags of springs. Uh, one set has the two gold springs in there, a single large black spring, and then two smaller black springs. It's these two smaller black springs that are going to seat right on, onto here. Okay. And they just sit on top of the O-rings. Well, sit. the O-rings are what hold them in. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and install the rear tweak brace onto the car. This is your tweak brace. It installs right here. Again, this is going into Delrin. I wouldn't use any Loctite on it, but you're going to be using the uh, smaller button head screw. Now you're able to adjust each one of these set screws to adjust the, the droop. Okay, and you want the springs just touching the lower pod. It should be about one or two turns. Again, you're, gonna, you're probably going to set this up and tweak this after you've got the car fully built. We'll mess with that more later, but for now, it seems like it's fine. Okay, next we're going to work on the center post. The center post is going to be this carbon fiber piece, two of the ball studs, a ball joint here with the uh, button head screw, center post with a one millimeter shim. The one millimeter shim is the middle sized shim. If you don't have a measuring tool, it's not the thick one. There's like a real thick one, and then there's some thin ones. The uh, one millimeter is the middle. Okay. I'm basically just going to throw this guy in here. Actually, we're missing our grub screw. I believe it's one of these guys. All right, so. Tiny, tiny bit of Loctite. I'm not really putting much on it at all. And then the grub screw. So the grub screw is the four, it's a four millimeter. So, yep, it is one of those guys. what's going to hold the pivot ball on. So we're going to put a little bit of Loctite on there as well. We actually should have put some on both sides, but here. We'll get a little on there, back it out, and put it back in. like so and then that is going to mount here just like so then we're going to go ahead and make a uh, stud with a pivot ball and the M2-6, which is the longest set screw, and uh, we'll use that on the front center shock here. And we're gonna use that thick um, aluminum, or the thick shim that's, that we talked about here, the one thick shim. I 
That's a little much. And we're going to just put this in the frontmost hole. So now we're going to build these um, dampener links, basically. You can just screw these straight in. Uh, if you need to chamfer the hole a little bit, you can to try to help get this started. But it should be fine to just do it by hand here. Make sure you don't scrape it up if you are holding it. And you can also clean up this a little bit if there's a little bit of flashing on here with the X-Acto. Just don't take off too much because um, you don't want these popping off. And then once you've got those together, you want to grease these up pretty liberally. Um, in the instructions, I recommend uh, Kyosho 30,000 um, diff grease, but we're just going to use what we have, which is 35K and Atomic. You basically just work this into the uh, shaft here just to kind of get some dampening going on. Alrighty, and then these little dampers just snap right on, and uh, they recommend putting the piston side on the inside. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to do is build the rear shock, and we want to pre-grease the center shaft here. You're basically just going to work the grease into this piece here, this shock body basically. We'll clean off any excess if it's too much. Then you're going to go ahead and thread on the adjustment collar. Then you're going to go ahead and install this guy first. Make sure you put your eyelet on the end. Make sure you're still greased up in here. You can go ahead and put your spring on. Droop stop with the tiny screw, the tiny set screw. We're just going to set it to the ender for now. And then we have our little uh, C cup, spring cup. and it just clips in place. All right. And then this little guy just goes on here. All right. So here's everything you're gonna need for the front. Uh, Reflex is very proud of the front. They, you know, it's what sets the car apart from a lot of the other chassis out there. And uh, they note that there might be some slight fitting that needs to happen. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. There are two uh, M2 by four set screws or grub screws. And these are going to be going into our bottom A arms. That's these guys. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's these guys. They have the shock mounts here on the side. And there is a dot on them. There's a tiny little dot. And you wanna make sure that dot is facing downward. And then you can put your set screw in on the top side. And this is a droop adjustment screw. And we're just gonna put it halfway. 
and look for the dot, that's the bottom, and come in through the top. And then you're going to want to test fit these on the uh, bulkhead here. This is the front bulkhead. So once you've got them test fit, it should go in there pretty pretty well. You shouldn't have to shave much off. You're going to want to put your king pins in or your pivot pivot pins, hinge pins. Uh, they're going to take a little bit of uh, effort. They feel like they don't thread in very easily. I don't know if these uh, A-arms are not threaded, but they definitely... You definitely have to apply pressure to get them to go in while you're screwing. You also want to make sure that your hinge pin is tight all the way onto the uh, arm. That's where the threaded portion is. And I know these are fine threads, but they seem to take forever to go in. And work this stripping. I'm trying to pull it out right now. Because I noticed some of the Delrin was kind of coming off as I screwed it in. And these are very tight fitting uh, into the A arms. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> Let's try it again. see the Delrin just kind of coming out as I screw it in. You can see like the fibers. Yeah, I mean there's nothing stopping it. I don't understand why it won't go all the way in. We might have to, uh, you might have to drill it out a bit. I don't want to keep going and then it strips it, so. I mean, you can see how much of the Delrin is coming out when I try to thread it in. So I would definitely pre-thread these in uh, before you try to put them on the bulkhead. Maybe even drill them out just a tad, at least the side the threading is going to go into. just because uh, these threads are very thick, well, tall, not necessarily thick. It's a fine thread, but they're very tall. And this barely, I mean, this is a tight fit for the shaft. Well, it was. Um, so you definitely need to uh, apply a lot of force and pressure while you're screwing it in and back it out every once in a while to pull out the excess Delrin. finally tied up against it. Let's do this one now. So I'm going to end up using a 1 16th bit here just to kind of get a little bit more space. I'm going to do it by hand. Just to hopefully get a little material out of there. And then hopefully this will still be tight and be able to create threads because there's no threads in there. You're basically channeling the threads as you screw it in for the first time. So again, that's why you don't want to just spin it on there too much. install it in the bulkhead. That was a process. You want to make sure that this portion here is not rubbing right in here. And if it is, you can take off just a tiny bit of material. But we should be good here. All right, let's move on. So I just realized, I feel like a dummy here. 
we've got a little drill bit. Why did I not think of that? Same thing. Just probably easier to use. <laughs> so on these front arms, you can use either the carbon fiber or the steel caster spacer. Either one of these. Uh, they mentioned that the steel one is slightly thinner, but the carbon one is uh, easily sanded. So, so use whichever you want, whichever fits best. So these are definitely going to be tight in here, and that's what I mentioned using this drill. So we're just going to go ahead and use the steel uh, caster spacer. And then uh, on these right here, the hinge pins, one side is longer than the other. Okay, And uh, you're going to want to install the shorter end toward the rear of the assembly. And this is the rear side. This is the front side. OK, so you want the shorter side. You're basically going to go in with the long side, right? So also on your arms, just like these ones, there's a tiny dot. These also have a tiny dot. You can see it. The dot always faces down. So we're going to go ahead and put our arm in. And our shim. Get it in there nicely. Okay. And then, like I said, the long side in um, with the flat portion facing up, obviously because that's where your grub screw is going to hold. You just got to kind of work it in there. All right, like so. Let's do the other side. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put in our two little tiny grub screws. They're the M2 by 2s. And that's what it should look like. The next thing we're going to do is install the front tower. And that's going to, let's see, there's a flat side and then a side that protrudes. You want the side that protrudes out. It's a little bit of a tight fit. May have to use our little drill bit just to clear it out a little. You don't want to. You don't really want to take much off. If you if you can get it on just by pressure, do that. Uh, I just took a little bit off just to kind of uh, help get it started, and then we're good. And then it snapped right in. And you're going to use uh, the last two button heads that are the two by six button heads, which I thought were leftovers, but they are not. Actually, we want to make sure we uh, Loctite this with just a little bit of Loctite. So we tighten that all the way down, but we want to back it off a little and make sure we kind of go in evenly. So I wouldn't fully tighten it, just get snug and then do the other side. Get snug and then you can kind of come back and tighten them both. All right. So we have some remaining shims that we're going to use. Uh, these go on our knuckles. It should be 1.5 millimeters in total. And we're going to go ahead and build our knuckles. So we've got four, well, two on each one of the little ball studs. So 
So this top portion is just the ball stud. And then this bottom one will have shims on it. So we're going to shim it first. There is a thicker shim and a thinner shim, so we're going to use one of each. And we are going to put just the tiniest amount of Loctite on. We don't want to get them on the shims. Just barely. It may not even actually matter. But it makes us feel better. We're going to go ahead and build the other one. And here we have our knuckles. Now we're going to go ahead and put the knuckles into our assembly. Now, it's mentioned that this uh, socket could be tight. And if it's too tight, you might want to chamfer just a little bit, take a little bit out just so you can pop it in. Um, you can also use a little bit of heat, but don't overdo it, like just a little bit, just to warm it up. And uh, it says, if you have to use too much force, stop, because you do not want to break them, and they will break if you have to use too much force. All right, so let's just see how they feel. Now, yeah, easy. Easy peasy on that one. And the top. Um, definitely feels a little tighter. Let's go ahead and just slightly take out a little bit. Just ever so slightly. And that'll just kind of help us get it started. Also, I noticed these uh, these ball studs kind of have a flat top. I don't know if you can see that. They're not as rounded. And if they were a little more rounded, it might make it a little easier. I'm gonna pop this bottom one out. Is there a difference here? Let's try to put it in the top. So just uh, this arm is tight. Yeah, it's just this arm is tight. All right, so we need to take out a little bit more material. This is on our top, top arm. We gotta take out a little more. Jeez. And I say it, I've said it before, I'd rather have tolerances a little too tight where you can take off material than not too tight, right? Like having not enough material and having a lot of slop is probably a little bit more hard to deal with. You can't really fix it sometimes. So having just a little bit extra material is kind of a good thing. I'd prefer that. Obviously, having it just straight up fit would be ideal, the most ideal, but I get it. All right. And these also have the adjustable um, tightness, I guess. So as that wears over time, or if you take off just a little too much, you can probably tighten it down and take care of it. Let's try this side. Well, it went in just fine. And now I think the bottom one's gonna be the issue on this side. Let's pop this back off since that was easy. Oh yeah, man, what a difference, okay. Ta-da! Seems good. Mm -hmm. 
So all the pivot balls, just so you know, are made of 70, 75 aluminum, and you can polish them up. Um, we're just trying to get this guy together right now. We may come back later and pop these out and polish them up at some point. But they feel pretty good. There are three different positions for the ball stud. We're just going to start in the middle. You put a ball stud here, 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 and here for your shocks. There we go. And it's also recommended to install the tiny screws, the Phillips head screws, for our uh, pivot sockets. So basically, there's two here on the front, on the top, and then two here in the back. And our last one here. Now some of these, and we didn't even over, we didn't over tighten this at all. Like we barely just tightened it in, and it whitened before we even were all the way snug. So I don't know what's going on there. I worry, I'm hoping this isn't a weak point too bad. Um, also on these ones, it seems as though the screws just really aren't long enough to grab onto the other side. I don't know if you can see there. But it doesn't really reach the other side here. So you might actually need some longer screws there. It's that way on both sides, on the bottom arms. They're just too thick. You can see on this one as well. So I screw in. Basically stops right as you start to hit the other side. So either a longer screw or you have to thin this out. I wouldn't thin it out. That seems bad. But I do like the concept. I just hope it uh, doesn't create too many weak points. So next we're going to make some ball studs using our pivot balls and two of the very short, well not the very short, but the uh, M2 by 4 set screws. Yeah. And these are for our steering knuckle ends. Remember, the uh, other end of these set screws are going to be going into knuckles. And we can also Loctite them. So now we're going to go ahead and build our shocks. Uh, they recommend putting a little bit of grease on the threads to hold your shock adjustment collar. Um, and also, you, know, you want to grease up the inside a little bit here. And these are designed to limit travel in a stock configuration, and they're meant to be used with smaller front tires, so 21.6 millimeter and smaller. If you want more upward travel, more compression, uh, then you can actually cut one of the segments off of the shock shaft here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and build one of these. Just kind of want to work your grease in there. Okay, I'm actually going to just take a little bit of the excess and rub it on here. Huh? Okay, here's our adjustment collar. Make sure you have the lip facing down if this is the top. You thread it in lip to the outside because that's where our spring is going to seat and then we're going to use the gold springs now that we got those guys done now mind you nothing holds them together they just come apart what's going to hold them together are the pivot balls uh, we're going to go ahead and install the front end so these little uh, nipples here supposed to go in the tiny little holes but they do not want to fit so we need to open up those holes a little bit in the chassis I mean I'm putting a lot of pressure on there and they're not going in I don't want to bend them up on the aluminum so we're just gonna exacto these holes out just a little bit just get them chamfered so that maybe they'll slide in a little better And 
and we try again. There we go. Nice and snug. And we're going to use some of the M2 by 4 countersunks and throw them in there. Don't forget a little Loctite. And now we can pop our shocks on. And like before, if they're a little too tight, you can trim it just a little bit. Then of course your droop screw right here. That'll adjust your right eye a little bit. All right, no trimming needed on that one. It was tight, but seems good. And again, you can adjust your uh, droop right here. But not with this tool. I need a longer tool. I had a hard enough time finding a 0.9. Um, that's okay. We have some other ones on the way, so that's not a big deal. All right, so now we just go ahead and build our turnbuckles. It's pretty straightforward. You probably don't need to see me do this, so we will be back once we're done with the turnbuckles. Now, just in case you're new to the hobby, remember your turnbuckles, each side is threaded opposite. So that way when they're mounted, you can just spin it and it'll bring them both in and both out. So they, one of them is a backwards thread. Um, also, there's a little machined line here. You wanna have both your turnbuckles when we install them you want to have your machined line the same direction. So if we install them on the car like so, we have the machined line on the left side on both. That little tiny line there. And that way you spin the turnbuckle the same direction to, to adjust your, uh, your camber and whatnot. Or your toe in this case. Remember, toe is this. Camber is this and caster is the rotation of the assembly. So caster, if you had a line here, right? Caster would adjust this so that the turning point is different. All right, toe, camber, caster. Now we have two posts to install. Uh, we have extra, it doesn't mention what to use. But we have both long and short countersunks, so we're going to just go ahead and use the longs. I don't believe they're used anymore anywhere else, so we will use longs. Actually, I want to... Uh, these are aluminum, so we can use a little bit of Loctite here. And now we're going to build two more studs with the M2 uh, by 4 Set screws, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy. And we are going to use those on the servo arm. And remember, the servo arm is Delrin, so do not Loctite the pivot balls onto there. like so. And then this guy will just go on here like so once we get our servo in. We're actually not going to install that yet. We don't want to install that yet. And then we're going to go ahead and build this front brace section here, which is just going to use some more button heads. These pieces are aluminum.
So actually there's a taller side and a shorter side on these and you actually want the taller side towards the carbon. So this one is backwards. You need to flip it around. All right, like so. And this guy will be our servo mount. Okay. Bam, look at that. While we're filming, my tools got delivered. I tried going to the local hobby store to find some nice ones, some MIPs, and I couldn't find anything there. They didn't have anything for a .09 or 0.9. And then so I ran to Home Depot and I couldn't find anything. And I ran to Lowe's and I couldn't find anything. And then I ran to uh, Harbor Freight and they didn't have anything. And then I stopped by O'Reilly's and they had this cheapy junk kit, which is what I've been using. Where did it go? This guy. That's just got a bunch of bits. And it happened to have a 0.9 and a 0.7. So I picked it up so that we had something to work on this today. And um, I ordered a uh, set last night of these and here they are today so now we've got a longer one we'll see how these do i'll put a link to these in the description below just in case you're interested there amazon but i'm sure most of you have way better tools i just couldn't get a 0.9 uh like mip or anything tell me in the comments below what 0.9 millimeter uh driver are you using or wrench or whatever hell i couldn't even find l allen keys allen wrenches so here we go See, does it fit in the hole to adjust our droop? Oh my god. Okay, barely. Barely. It's like so tight. Ugh. Ugh. But well, we can fit in there. Nice. That'll do. Better than nothing. Okay, like I said, better than nothing. Moving on, diff time. All right, so you're gonna take your axle and you've got the adjuster and we'll just uh, thread that on. Goes that away. And throw the O-ring on there as well. Okay. And then we'll do the inside pressure plate basically just sits on there and then we've got our differing do not lose all your little ball bearings now the instructions say to CA glue this but I don't know should we I guess so. We can we can glue this. We've got some Bob Smith Industries here. We'll just put a tad. And a tad. Then we've got the spur and the bearing. And our nine little diff balls. Now the trick to this, we're gonna use some of this. The trick to this is just to use the uh, grease itself to pick up the balls and put them in. Ta-da.
and our outer pressure plate and ring, and we're going to go ahead and glue that as well. Drop that guy on there. Drop a bearing on there. And then we clip it with the E-clip, or the Jesus clip. Hopefully we don't Jesus the clip. bad, not too bad. And then you can uh, lube the balls if you'd like with some bearing oil or whatever your uh, preferred method is. And we've got our two washers one on this side. And then we're going to go ahead and take the axle carrier and uh, Oh, we have to throw a bearing on here. Throw a bearing on there. Hmm. They do mention to put a tiny drop of CA on the outer race of the bearing. It's probably not a bad idea. That'll help get rid of any kind of slop back there. And you don't want to put too much because someday you're going to have to replace that bearing. Uh, but if you just just touch it here, let's clean this up a little bit. But if you just touch it with just the tiniest amount, and then we can drop that bearing down in there. Make sure you're sitting flat. But you should be good. We'll do this side as well. With just the tiniest amount. Get that guy down in there. washer on. And then the left hub. We've got our set screw here, which will be Loctiting with a little bit of Loctite. We Loctite all the things all the time. Well, at least we're starting to. <laughs> we didn't used to. And then we wonder why we always have screws falling out. All right. Feels good. We've got our front axles now. And they actually mentioned some Loctite on these, so we will Loctite them like everything else we do. car is pretty much done. You're ready to install your electronics, your motor, uh, servo, whatnot. Um, uh, if you notice, my axles are slightly different. They're the reverse thread axles. So you actually just use an M2 screw and it uh, screws in. That way you don't have exposed axle thread in the front. Um, yeah, so we're going to do another video, probably showing all the electronics and whatnot. And uh, then obviously we'll show it off running at some point. But this is all for this video. I know it was a long one. I appreciate you sticking around. I hope this helped anybody uh, trying to put it together. And uh, yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, share it uh, to anybody else that might be interested in what the build is like or need the help with their build. And uh, yeah, get out there and run some cars, guys.